Now, we've been inviting several leading mayoral candidates to join us live right here on CP24 to reflect on the race with exactly one month to go now until Election Day. And for more, we're joined live in studio by Anthony Fury. Thanks so much for joining us one month till Election Day. Thanks so much for coming in today. Yeah, great to be here. And, you know, I'm feeling energized. And I feel like I'm just getting started. <laughs> One more month of this. So it's great. It's great to see uh, how I'm leaping up uh, in the polls every mm -hmm. week. It seems to be uh, jumping over another person. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to getting out there, meeting as many Torontonians as possible, and, 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 and really just fighting for this city and all the families in it. Now, this past week, there's been a series of debates, and you were not uh, asked to participate in these debates. So... I want to give you a chance right here on CP24 Live to tell us exactly what would have been your main message in those debate formats. Well, look, it's been a privilege to be a newspaper columnist broadcaster in this city for, for more than a decade. I'm the father of three small kids. I love this city. I believe Toronto is a city worth fighting for. But we can't go one step further in the direction of cities like San Francisco, Seattle. We all see the videos, all the news stories of what's happening in those cities, a city in decline. And we're starting to feel that in some respects mm -hmm. here in Toronto. And I'm going to say no step further. I'm going to invest in our police officers. I've said I'm going to hire 500 new officers. That only brings us back to what we were at 10 years ago. I said I'm going to phase out those drug injection sites, which are unfortunately causing a lot of the turmoil we see on our streets. Instead, we're going to open treatment centers and we're going to be compassionate for those individuals while also making our families safer. And I'm going to take a look at the books because I got to tell you, this budget, it's gone up 50 percent over the past 10 years. So all the other candidates running against me, most of them are talking about entirely new taxes, mm -hmm. lots of tax increases. Uh -uh. You got to have respect for taxpayers and look at the books before you even begin to talk about taking more money from families during this affordability crisis right now. Housing is, of course, a big topic this last couple of weeks that you've been out campaigning, and no doubt it will be for the next month. As we head to the polls, we keep hearing about deeply affordable housing, and that's desperately needed throughout the city. How do you define deeply affordable? Look, we primarily have a supply problem here. There's so many people around the world who want to call Toronto their home, which is an amazing place for us to be in. But we got a lot of people joining us every year. It's a supply and demand mm -hmm. issue. And I have said that when it comes to development, I'm going to be laser focused on getting projects done faster. If a project is not approved within six months, then it's auto approved. Still have to follow all of the rules, but we're going to have to get the planning department moving a whole lot faster. Every new unit that we bring on the books in terms of a condo, that's $3,000 more a year in terms of revenue. That's how we grow the wealth. And we got to get more units going here. Development fees, time. Time is money. So the longer it takes to get a project approved, the more these units are going to cost. So that's how we bring down uh, the price of housing for families all across the city. Mm -hmm. Not just the price in, in terms of getting units built, but having them specifically affordable. How do you focus on that? Well, the government should not be in the business of building homes, but we should be empowering the private sector to go out and build these units as rapidly as possible and as low cost as possible. And I'm the only candidate for mayor who has said that I am going to eliminate the municipal land transfer tax for first-time homebuyers. It's the only actual lever the city has to directly decrease the price of homes, and that's going to save young families about $25,000 on a purchase. And I'm really proud to say that I'm going to bring in the managerial approach to the budget that allows me to deliver affordability results for families. As we've seen, there are a lot of people in this race for mayor, uh, and we've seen in that recent poll that we mentioned, you are starting to gain some momentum in that most recent Main Street poll. What makes you the right candidate for mayor of Toronto? Well, look, there are two candidates who I think have a very clear vision of what they want to see from this city. And their feet are planted firmly on the ground and they will not back down from their vision. Everyone else is kind of wishy-washy uh, campaigning based on focus groups. That is myself and Olivia Chow. And I'm standing for more police officers, uh, more affordability, less taxes. And, and I believe uh, the vision for Ms. Chow is the direct opposite of all of that. So mm -hmm. I think that's the choice. And I'm quite happy to see that more and more Torontonians are saying they're going to be choosing me for mayor. But there's still a month left. Mm -hmm. And I want to go out and meet as many people as possible in this amazing city. It's been a privilege so far uh, to get out there. And, and I'm, I'm not stopping, knocking on doors, going to subways every, every single morning, saying hi to folks. And, and I'm just energetic to go out there and, uh, and say hi to everyone in this great city. As we've seen in that poll and many other polls, Olivia Chow does seem to be the clear front runner in all this with one month to go. What is your plan to catch up to Olivia Chow specifically? Hard work, nonstop. I'm going to be out there pounding the pavement 
every single waking hour I have, and I'm not sleeping many hours, so I'm just out there working nonstop. Uh, I'm going to be out in Etobicoke and Scarborough and North York this weekend with canvassing teams, knocking on doors, going to events, and, and just getting out there. I mean, it is just, when you run for mayor, you realize just how, how amazing of a city Toronto is, and I am worried that we will continue slipping, and I think that uh, this is a city worth fighting for, and we can fix it. All right, one month to go. Candidate Anthony Fieri, thanks so much for your thanks time so and coming in today. I appreciate it.